Today we're shaking things up a bit and talking about two criminals that committed crimes involving cheesy foods. If you're curious, the recipe is in the description below. Which is worse? Confusing a block of cheese for a block of coke and almost killing four people because of it? Or killing your neighbor, fleeing the country, and then poisoning your new eyelash lady with a slice of cheesecake? I can't decide either, so I'm gonna tell you about both. Buckle up, y'all. It's a wild ride ahead. Just about every little girl dreams of being a model, ballerina, or actress at some point. For some, that dream fizzles away or turns into something else. For others, they follow through and turn that dream into a reality. Jessica Sandy Booth was an 18-year-old girl from Memphis, Tennessee, who wanted to be a model so bad. In 2005, she was approached with an opportunity to be in a TJ Maxx commercial as the role of excited teen, but that opportunity came with a price tag. $7,900 that she had to pay her prospective modeling agency. Uh, that already sounds like a scam because aren't the models supposed to be getting paid to work instead of paying to work? The answer is yes. Now, $7,900 is a lot of money to have to pay up front like that, especially for an 18-year-old. No bake sale or lemonade stand was gonna earn her that much money, no matter how hard she tried. So that's when it hit her. Jessica was going to steal the block of coke that she somehow saw in her neighbor's house. This particular house that allegedly had this blow was owned by four men which meant it would be really hard for an 18-year-old girl to break in and successfully run away with the goods without getting caught. That brought her to the only logical solution. Hire a hitman to execute the four men so she could then get in their house and steal the block of coke. It's not clear how Jessica found a guy willing to be the hitman, but she did. She gave him these instructions. Break into the house, slay the four men inside, grab the big C, and leave. Jessica told the hitman if there were any kids in the house old enough to realize what was going on and testify in court, he should whack them too. She said, and I quote, if they old enough to run their mouth, they gotta get blasted. Cause I'm sorry, I love kids, but I'm sorry. So I'm gonna start by brushing my pastry with almond milk. But wait until you hear this. The hitman Jessica hired was actually an undercover police officer. You'd think at this point that the cop would flash his badge and tell Jessica she's under arrest, but that's not what happened. When Jessica asked him to do the deed, she didn't offer any money up front. She said he would have to wait until she had the coke in her possession and was able to sell it. The cop knew he couldn't agree to the agreement with a straight face. Who would say yes to killing four adult men and potentially a few children for no pay at all? So since the cop couldn't go along with Jessica's plot, he handed her two disabled firearms and told her to go in and do it herself. Jessica agreed. So now I'm gonna sprinkle my cheese on my pastry. She reached forward, grabbed the firearms, and made her way over to the house. To reassure the fake hitman that she was for real, Jessica told him, I ain't trying to say I'm a pro at it, but I kind of got an idea because I've been watching the movies, you know what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but I feel like this is going too far. Couldn't the cop just arrest Jessica after she initially asked him to slay those men? Well, he wanted to prove that she had the intent to kill. And by grabbing the weapons and walking over to the targeted house, that was all he needed. He arrested Jessica and she was sentenced to 15 years in prison for conspiracy and attempted manslaughter. Cops later searched the house that Jessica said had the substances. And you wanna know what they found? A big block of queso fresco topped with a sprinkle of salt, AKA a block of cheese. Some people just really aren't cut out for the criminal life. And I'm not just talking about Jessica. This next girl I'm gonna tell you about is just as bad, if not worse, because she actually went through with her crazy cheesy plot. So Victoria Nazarova was a 42-year-old Russian woman who lived in Brooklyn, New York. She had a desire to start fresh and came up with the perfect plot to do so. In August of 2016, Victoria made an appointment with her eyelash lady, Olga Zvik. 
Olga was this beautiful 35-year-old woman who looked like she could be Victoria's sister or doppelganger. But Victoria didn't want to just look like her. She wanted to be her. She was going to steal her identity. So Victoria scheduled her appointment and headed over to Olga's house. As a thank you gift, Victoria offered Olga a slice of cheesecake that was made with a secret ingredient, finazepam a powerful Russian-made tranquilizer. Olga ate the cheesecake and got so sick, she started to vomit, which meant she didn't ingest enough of the tranquilizer for it to do what Victoria intended. Panicked, Victoria was all like, oh no, let me get you some soup. That will make you feel better for sure. The following day, Victoria showed up with soup that much to Olga's surprise was also loaded with finazepam. Olga passed out on the floor, and this time, Victoria was certain she was gone for good. She rummaged around and snatched up Olga's passport, employment authorization card, a gold ring, and some cash. To cover her tracks, Victoria dressed Olga in some lingerie and scattered pills around her limp body to make it look like she had OD'd and ended her own life. She was smart and made sure the pills she left were also finazepam, so if and when toxicology tests were run on Olga's body, everything would match up. But Olga wasn't deceased. She only pa she had no idea her victim wasn't officially deceased. The next day, one of Olga's friends found her and she was rushed to the hospital. When Olga came to, she started piecing everything together. Even though she initially passed out, Olga started to remember things as she was recovering. She recalled seeing Victoria going through her stuff, and it was pretty clear to her and the detectives why Victoria committed the crime, to steal her identity. Victoria and Olga literally had the same hair color, same complexion, and they both spoke Russian. It was the perfect setup. Olga said she always found it odd why Victoria came to her when she lived all the way in Queens and Victoria lived in Brooklyn. There were plenty of other estheticians who were much closer to her. Even though Olga did Victoria's eyelashes for six months, she said she was my client. She was never my friend, never. But why would Victoria want to steal Olga's identity? She was on the run from the Russian police after killing a woman in her home country. And they didn't find this out until Victoria was accused. The reason Victoria came to New York was to escape Russia because she was wanted for slaying a woman named Alla Alexienko. So in 2014, Alla was reported missing by her daughter Nadia. Nadia immediately suspected Victoria was responsible, and here's why. Victoria used to live next door to Alla. Nadia no longer lived with her mother. She was currently staying in New York, but made a point to talk to Alla on the phone every day, a tradition they had been doing for over eight years. Victoria was this glamorous, name-brand loving fashionista who was all about her hair, nails, and shoes. Alla was an average mom who would often put her duties before her looks. Nadia had her suspicions, but didn't want to jump to any conclusions. And she obviously supported her mom and wanted what was best for her, even if that meant a friendship with a woman she thought was sketchy. But over time, Nadia's gut feeling about Victoria only got worse. Victoria promised Alla she would be traveling to New York soon and would be happy to take some gifts to Nadia. So Alla went all out. She gave Victoria two main coats and around $6,000 in cash to give to her daughter. Victoria happily took the items, but conveniently had to keep postponing her visit to the Big Apple. Nadia knew something was wrong and she kept bringing it up to her mom, warning her to get the money and coats back. On October 4th, 2014, Alla told Nadia that Victoria had agreed to give everything back and she should have nothing to worry about. But the following day, Nadia did nothing but worry because her mom wasn't picking up the phone and she always answered. In total, Nadia said she had to have called her mom at least 100 times. After consistently getting sent to voicemail, Nadia knew it was time to report Alla is missing. Nadia called Victoria to see if she knew anything. Victoria responded saying she had tea with Alla, but had already left. She then claimed Alla was on a trip with a friend and her phone was probably just dead. Okay, but if this woman has talked to her adult daughter every day for eight years, 
You'd think she'd tell her something about the upcoming trip. Well, Nadia later got a hold of her mom's phone records and saw her last call was with Victoria at 11 p.m. That's when Nadia knew Victoria was putting up a front. She had to have something to do with her mom's disappearance. Nadia then hopped on a flight back to Russia from New York and began searching for her mother. A few days into the search, Nadia was hopeless. Ala was nowhere to be found. Desperate, Nadia asked Victoria to meet her outside of the apartment complex she and Ala live in. Victoria agreed. When she came downstairs, Victoria was greeted by Nadia with a big, tight hug and the threat that she would choke her out if she didn't tell her where Allah was. Victoria pushed Nadia away and started running up the stairs, screaming, Your mother is alive! She's alive! Nadia assumed Victoria would pull something like this, so she had already called the cops, and officers were waiting there to question her. Victoria told them she didn't know anything, and with no solid evidence against the woman, they couldn't do anything and left. When Nadia went through her mother's apartment, she knew someone had robbed it. Jewels, family heirlooms, and the $50,000 life savings Alla kept stashed away were all missing. On the wall, Alla wrote the word dingi, which means money in Russian. Nadia took that as a direct clue that her mom left behind for her. The two had many conversations about Victoria's intentions as Nadia speculated the woman was after Ala for her money. So Nadia took that evidence to the cops, but they were like, so you're telling us the word money written on the wall means Victoria's guilty? We're gonna need some more evidence than that. Nadia was enraged that the authorities wouldn't do anything and she hounded them so much that she earned the nickname Crazy American Daughter Who's Looking for Her Mother. Despite the doubt posed by police officers, Nadia wasn't giving up on finding her mom. She posted a bunch of flyers and drove all over creation to follow leads. And here's where Nadia had a light bulb moment. If there are all of these cameras at stoplights, would they have caught Victoria on camera to determine where she was the night of Allah's disappearance? Yep, Nadia was able to get her hands on this photo of Victoria speeding down the road with Allah in the passenger seat. It was timestamped on October 5th at 10 a.m., aka the day Allah stopped answering her daughter's phone calls. Confidently, Nadia dialed the lead detective's phone number and told him about her discovery. He responded, I know, I have these pictures. Uh. The detective said they were working hard on this case and had already determined Victoria rented the car she and Alla were photographed in. They brought her in for questioning and set her up to a lie detector test, and she failed every single question, like, were you alone? Do you know where Alla's body is? And so on. The results from this polygraph test didn't come back immediately, though. So when Victoria was released, she fled the country. Russian police issued a warrant for her arrest, but it was too late. She was already gone and nowhere to be found. Nadia was enraged. She knew it was Victoria the whole time. Why didn't they just listen to her? Well, come to find out, Victoria was hooking up with the lead detective on her case, which is probably why she got away in time. Nadia thinks the lead detective helped his new lady friend out by slowing things down in the investigation. Nadia stayed in Russia and continued trying to find her mom while figuring out a way to track down Victoria, too. In April of 2015, Nadia received the dreaded phone call. Charred human remains were found and the cops believed they belonged to Ala. The identity of the corpse was later confirmed as Ala by Nadia, who was literally shown her mother's burned bones. With that, it was confirmed that Victoria executed Ala, burned and hid her body, and fled the country. So now, to find her. Well, that actually wasn't that difficult because Victoria was all over social media. By creeping on her Facebook page, Nadia was able to determine that Victoria somehow got a fake passport and fled to Mexico. After taking several beach and poolside photo shoots, she went to New York. 
In a car selfie, Victoria posted, Nadia noticed how unique the stitching on the headrest of her car was. She decided to go to a huge parking lot to scout out what car it looked like, and eventually she found it a Chrysler 300. Nadia also sleuthed out that Victoria lived in Brooklyn's Russian neighborhood, Sheepshead Bay, which was just a few blocks away from where Nadia lived. Over time, Nadia found a Chrysler 300 that was owned by a man in an apartment building that she recognized in the reflection of Victoria's shades in one of her selfies. It belonged to Victoria's boyfriend, whom she lived with. Now, Alla's demise and Olga's poisoning weren't the only crimes Victoria had committed. She had been going around New York, poisoning other people and stealing their money and other expensive things. Victoria worked as an escort and she preyed on her clients, but they were hesitant to go to the police for obvious reasons. Her ex-boyfriend even said he thinks she killed his dog. On March 20th, 2017, Victoria was finally tracked down by the police. She was arrested and indicted on 10 charges, ranging from attempted manslaughter and robbery to assault and reckless endangerment. As of now, the final decision hasn't been announced, but if Victoria is convicted, she'll face up to 25 years in prison. That's it? Dang, I feel so bad for Nadia. She gave up months of her life to track down her mother's killer and probably won't see the justice she deserves. On the topic of cheesy crimes, my cheese straws are ready to eat. And let me know which case you found the most interesting. Jessica's hitman story or Victoria's crazy cheesecake crime streak? Thanks for watching.